This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at Bourne Harbour cycles. Here we have an example of a Bourne Harbour cycle. This one is for magnesium chloride. As we can see, there are a total of six steps in the Bourne Harbour cycle. They are the enthalpy of formation, the enthalpy of atomization, the bond enthalpy, the ionization energy, the electron affinity, and the lattice enthalpy. In this video, we'll go through each of the steps, starting with enthalpy of formation. So here we have the definition for enthalpy of formation, which is the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements in their standard states under standard conditions. Here we have the equation for the enthalpy of formation of sodium chloride, which is one mole of solid sodium reacting with half a mole of chlorine gas to form one mole of solid sodium chloride. And the enthalpy of formation is negative 411 kilojoules per mole. The next equation is for the formation of sodium oxide. So that's two moles of solid sodium reacting with half a mole of oxygen gas to form one mole of solid sodium oxide. The next example is for the formation of magnesium chloride. So that's one mole of solid magnesium one mole of chlorine gas to form one mole of solid magnesium chloride. And finally, we have the equation for the formation of calcium oxide, which is one mole of solid calcium, half a mole of oxygen gas, and one mole of solid calcium oxide. As we can see from the enthalpy of formation values, they are all negative, which means they are exothermic. In other words, energy is released during the formation of these compounds. Next we have lattice enthalpy, which is the enthalpy change when one mole of solid ionic compound is broken up into gaseous ions under standard conditions. So here we have the equation for the lattice enthalpy of sodium chloride, in which one mole of solid sodium chloride is broken up into one mole of gaseous sodium ions and one mole of gaseous chloride ions. And the lattice enthalpy is positive 790 kilojoules per mole. The next example is for sodium oxide, in which one mole of solid sodium oxide is broken up into two moles of gaseous sodium ions and one mole of gaseous oxide ions. Next we have magnesium chloride, in which one mole of solid magnesium chloride is broken up into one mole of gaseous magnesium ions and two moles of gaseous chloride ions. And finally we have calcium oxide, where one mole of solid calcium oxide is broken up into one mole of gaseous calcium ions and one mole of gaseous oxide ions. If we look at the values for the lattice enthalpy, we can see they're all positive, which means they are endothermic. This is because energy is required to break up the lattice structure of the ionic compounds. Moving on to enthalpy of atomization which is the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous atoms is formed from an element in its standard state under standard conditions. So here we have the equation for the enthalpy of atomization of sodium. Note the change in the state symbol from solid to gas. And the enthalpy of atomization is positive 107 kilojoules per mole. The next example is for magnesium, which has a value of positive 148 kilojoules per mole. Our next example is for chlorine. In this equation, we have half a mole of gaseous chlorine molecules. We only need half a mole of gaseous molecules to form one mole of gaseous chlorine atoms. And the last example is for oxygen. Once again, we only need half a mole of gaseous oxygen molecules to form one mole of gaseous oxygen atoms. If we look at the values for chlorine and oxygen, we can see that the enthalpy of atomization is half the value of the bond dissociation enthalpy. And this is because of the difference in the definition of enthalpy of atomization and bond dissociation enthalpy. Next we have the enthalpy of sublimation, which is the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid changes to one mole of gas under standard conditions. Our first example is the enthalpy of sublimation of sodium. This is where one mole of solid sodium atoms changes to one mole of gaseous sodium atoms. And the enthalpy of sublimation is positive 107 kilojoules per mole. 
Note that this value is the same as the enthalpy of atomization of sodium. So either of these processes can be used in a Born Harbor cycle. Next we have the enthalpy of sublimation of lithium. Once again we have one mole of solid lithium atoms changing to one mole of gaseous lithium atoms. Next we have the enthalpy of sublimation for magnesium. And finally the enthalpy of sublimation for calcium. So as mentioned previously the enthalpy of sublimation values for metals will be the same as the enthalpy of atomization values. And both can be used in a Born Harbor cycle. Moving on to first ionization energy, which is the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous ions. So here we have the first ionization of sodium, where one mole of gaseous sodium ions is formed from one mole of gaseous sodium atoms. And this has a value of positive 496 kilojoules per mole. Next we have the first ionization of magnesium where we have one mole of gaseous 1 plus magnesium ions formed from one mole of gaseous magnesium atoms. Next we have the second ionization energy of magnesium where one mole of gaseous magnesium 2 plus ions is formed from one mole of gaseous magnesium 1 plus ions. Next we have bond dissociation enthalpy or bond energy which is the energy required to break one mole of bonds in the gaseous state. So here we have the equation for chlorine, in which one mole of gaseous chlorine molecules becomes two moles of gaseous chlorine atoms. Next we have oxygen, in which one mole of gaseous oxygen molecules becomes two moles of gaseous oxygen atoms. If we look at these values we can see that they are double the enthalpy of atomization of chlorine and oxygen. This is because in these equations we get two moles of gaseous atoms formed. Whereas in enthalpy of atomization we only get one mole of gaseous atoms. And finally we have the first electron affinity, which is the energy released when one mole of electrons is added to one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of one minus gaseous ions. Here we have the equation for the first electron affinity of chlorine. Note the formation of one mole of gaseous chloride ions from one mole of gaseous chlorine atoms. Next we have the equation for the first electron affinity of oxygen. Note the formation of one mole of gaseous one minus ions. Next we have the second electron affinity of oxygen. Here we can see the formation of one mole of gaseous two minus ions from one mole of gaseous one minus ions. If we look at the values for the electron affinities of chlorine and oxygen, we can see they are both negative, which means they are exothermic. However, if we look at the value for the second electron affinity of oxygen, we can see it is positive, which means it is endothermic. For Born Harbor cycles that involve oxygen, we need to use both the first and second electron affinities. So now we'll return to the Born Harbor cycle for magnesium chloride. Now that we've looked at the steps of the Born Harbor cycle in detail, in the next video we'll calculate the enthalpy of formation of magnesium chloride.